Hello you and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, allow me to introduce myself for the first time real quick. My name is Nathan Abuzo Matama, sorry for letting me see this channel is all about time lapse travel and tutorials and today I'm very excited to be talking about how to shoot cinematic footage on your phone. Today's video is sponsored by Samsung. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've been working with Samsung over the past year as an ambassador here in Australia to promote their phones and tablets and everything. I've been using the S9 Plus, well before that I had the SA Plus. S9 Plus and the Note 9. When I was in Hawaii a few weeks ago, I shot a bunch of stuff on my S9. More about that later. This video, I'll be talking about the Note 9. The Note 9 has high resolution, high frame rate video functions. It has a physical f1.5 aperture, which is great to create a shallow depth of field or to shoot in low light. It's got a huge battery. It's got a gorgeous big display, which is great for framing up your shots. And it has enormous amounts of storage with the micro SD card on the top. That is 256 gigabytes combined with the 512 gigabytes. That makes 768 gigabytes in this one phone. To top off the cool Note 9 features, it comes with this built-in pen, uh, it's called the S Pen and you can use the button on here as a wireless photo trigger for your phone. Uh, this is the one from the blue phone, I stole this from Sam Evans, sorry Sam you're not getting that one back because it fits nicely with the black design of this phone. Here's what I'll be talking about today, composition, light, subject, angle, level and accessories. I'll talk you through all of these elements and show you that by focusing on them you can turn your footage from meh into wow that is some cinematic content right there my guy. First up is the composition. When in doubt just use the rule of thirds. Put two lines in the middle of your screen like that and two lines in the middle like that and then put your element or your subject on one of these intersections and you will have a shot that is more naturally pleasing to the human eye. You can more often than not activate the grid on your phone to help you frame it up and it is one of those basic rules of, of filmmaking, of cinematography that really helps you and it's quite easy to spot it. It works for photos, it works for videos and as soon as you've learned that rule you can start playing with it, you can break it out, you can work more with you know much lower angled or oriented shots. As soon as you master these rules you can start breaking them but before you break them try working within them. I feel like that is a very good tip for any thing you're learning pretty much. Up next is the lighting. There is nothing worse than shooting in midday harsh sunlight. Everything is super contrasty, super hard shadows. It's hard to expose because it's either going to be partially overexposed or partially underexposed. There's ugly shadows on faces. It's too bright. It's probably too hot as well. You know what is much, much nicer to shoot in? Just around sunrise or around sunset. We call this golden hour because the light looks golden. And the reason it looks golden is because when we are turning and certain wavelengths of the sunlight are getting absorbed by the atmosphere because of the molecules in the air and everything, that results in less blue light hitting us and more golden light. And I mean, I don't have to tell you, we've all been there when the whole sky's on fire and everything's just nice. It's so much better to shoot in that soft glowing light than the harsh, ugly, midday sunlight. Up next is the subject, quite straightforward. Find something interesting to shoot. I know you love your cat or your dog and they're probably very cute. I love me some cats and dogs. But just honestly, step outside and shoot something more interesting. Surely there's something around, even if it's like a patch of grass surrounded by buildings. That's nice, that's contrast. Filmmaking is often about contrast, by the way, but maybe more about that later. What I'm trying to say is, don't just shoot what everyone else is shooting. Try and find something different. Think outside of the box. If you're at a spot with a bunch of tourists and they're all shooting the same thing, shoot the other way, or shoot sideways, or shoot the tourists. I don't know, just don't shoot that postcard thing that everyone else is shooting. You gotta think big and small scale. You wanna shoot wide and tight, find textures, find contrast, find interesting things. Interesting, that sounds horrible. Find interesting things. Up next, fix up your focal length and angles. This phone has two lenses built in, so it's got a wide angle and a telephoto zoom lens, which means that I can diversify I can work with a wide angle, have a wide vista, and then I can zoom in a bit more. And again, filmmaking is about contrast and juxtaposing elements. Don't just shoot everything in medium. Don't just shoot everything from eye level. Mix it up, find different things. Get low, get close, shoot a macro or a close-up shot, get as close as possible to an interesting texture or a color, and then step back and shoot wide. And the more diverse your range of footage is, the easier it will be in post-production to edit something that is captivating and not just boring jumping from one medium shot at eye level to one medium shot at eye level. Get really low, find a fun angle, shoot upwards, or get really high and shoot downwards and reveal hidden elements in your surroundings that you didn't know were there. One of the main tricks that I use to make my footage more interesting is to not shoot statically. 
I'm always moving, pretty much, depending on the shoot, obviously. But I find it so much easier to cut when there's a bit of motion. Obviously, you can shoot static if you have a static shot specifically in mind where it suits that specific, you know, composition or whatever. But when I'm shooting, I'm always shooting and I'm, al I'm always shooting. When I'm shooting, I'm always shooting, yeah, duh. When I'm shooting, I'm always moving. And another thing that really helps is when you, for example, have some stuff in the foreground to increase the parallax effect. Pretty much where your foreground moves and you can see like a parallax or a perspective shift almost. So adding a bit of motion and shooting through things like leaves or branches really elevates the look of the footage and the feel and it'll make it so much easier for you to edit your content afterwards. Now I hear you coming, you hear motion, you think gimbal. And yes, we'll be talking about gimbals, but first let's talk about accessories because you can shoot so much stuff stock standard in the normal auto mode that is video you can also flick into pro mode and have more control you can also work with you know paid apps to get better bit rates and everything what i'm trying to make clear with this video is that you don't need any accessories you don't need any extra stuff to shoot great stuff on a note 9 or s9 or any other samsung phone they have great image quality in mind and it looks so good straight out of camera the hawaii video that i'm going to show you later was shot completely in auto mode on my S9 Plus without any accessories, without any advanced editing, just point it and shoot and obviously get creative with what I was shooting and the composition and the subjects and stuff. But still, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to shoot amazing content straight out of the box with these phones. Now let's talk accessories. As fun as it is to shoot just on your phone, you can spice it up a bit and invest very little money to buy some things that'll make your life uh, so much easier to shoot. For example, this is like a $20 little photo tripod that comes with a phone clamp that you pretty much mount like that. And just like that, I have a little phone mount and this works perfectly to shoot time lapses. Now, ideally you want to get one of these that, so you can like put your phone in portrait mode. So that goes with these ones and the bigger ones as well. But yeah, this, this one is, I guess, not ideal, but still it's so cheap. <laughs> it also can help to shoot more stable content because it adds a bit of weight and a better grip. It's also great to shoot yourself, obviously. But one of these phone tripods, honestly, is one of the first accessories that I recommend that you buy uh, when you wanna expand from just shooting in auto mode and just with your hands on your phone. All of the stuff that I'm talking about today is also covered in a blog post with links to all these products. So you can check that out if you have the time for it. You also often find these these clamps they're super super easy and the good thing about all these accessories they usually have a standard photo size thread here at the bottom so you can even mount them uh, using a basic you know clamp or a more advanced clamp like this one on any tripod in the world pretty much pretty good right another really affordable accessory that i love and i bring with me everywhere because it opens up the possibilities and it is really quite cheap is this is a little case full of mobile phone lenses so you, we've all seen them and literally every camera store sells these these days. They're universal, so they work on any phone. They're little lenses that, I'll shoot some more close-ups of this later, but yeah, they screw in there and then you mount it just over your lens, you line it up, and before you know it, you have a fish eye lens or a wide angle lens. Now, this does degrade the quality depending on the um, price you paid for these things. So these were about 20 or 30 bucks. There's a couple brands and they make really high-end ones. That being said, the best image quality will always come straight from the phone itself. These are nice gadgets that you can shoot for like knee shots. This has a polarizer. It has a little kaleidoscope effect that I'll show you later. But what I'm trying to say is this phone is calibrated to work with the built-in lens and everything. If as soon as you add other stuff in front, the quality, regardless of the price for the product that you pay, the quality will go down a little bit. But then again, it opens up some fun stuff. So, you know, it's up to you. I find this definitely worth the money. It's small, it fits in any bag. You can even like attach it to your belt or whatever. And yeah, it's fun to have this on little uh, mobile phone photography missions. Now let's get more serious. We talked about motion earlier. You can buy a electronic camera stabilizer such as this gimbal. So this is pretty much a grip. I think we've all seen these, right? We've all seen those viral videos of people swinging them around when they're powered on. Let me do that real quick. You mount your phone in there. Oops, I mounted it the wrong way. I'm so good at making tutorials. <laughs> you mount your phone in there. It's way off balance. You balance it real quick. You slide that out more. You push that in a little bit and you power it on. And 
These are so affordable these days. They're so easy to find. Any camera store has them. There's a bunch of brands that make them. And voila, now you can, like with this joystick here, shoot really smooth cinematic footage or you can you know shake it around hold it in front of a mirror or in front of a camera and get lots of views on your Instagram because people love seeing this stuff this is like I don't know 150 bucks or something it opens up a lot of like cinematic shots where you go through doorways and portals that would otherwise shake because you're walking with your camera this eliminates a lot of shake and it's just yeah, it's mind-blowing how far this technology has come. Now, one final, possibly unexpected accessory that I recommend you invest in is a microphone. This is a, a little microphone that plugs into your headphone jack that is on these phones, which opens up directional sound, plugs in like that. It just, it just makes a lot of sense that when you're out filming stuff that you also take care of the audio. It comes with a little uh, windsock that goes over it. They call it a dead cat. I would call this a dead kitten because it's much smaller and it's also funny to say those words because people are always like, <gasps> anyways, shoot some audio while you're shooting as well. Shoot some dedicated audio clips. I'm usually out when I'm shooting. I've shot all the cinematic stuff and then I'll go and record uh, my feet walking in the sand or through grass or whatever. And I'll start by recording and saying audio, feet on sand, whatever, or shoot waves. So when you open up those clips, you immediately know what you've been shooting and what the context of that clip is. Because when you're shooting hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of clips, it might get easy to forget what that specific clip was and you think it's something and you're wasting time trying to figure out what it is. So if you speak up early when you're shooting an audio clip, it, uh, yeah, it just makes sense. Now I'm going to leave you with the footage I shot in Hawaii. So here's a bit of a pickle. I was asked by Samsung to create something on the S9 Plus. You may have seen it on my Instagram, a short version. I made a longer clip shot vertically because I wanted to shoot it, you know, quite easily and make, show how easy it is to create great cinematic content. I shot it vertically because I wanted, in my mind, show it on YouTube. You just hold it in your hand. I just shot it like that. It's like holding Hawaii in your hand. Now here's the stupid limit. YouTube limits vertical video upload quality when you're consuming it on a phone. So if you watch it on a desktop, it's perfect quality but then it's vertical. Whereas if you watch it full screen vertical on your phone, they limit the quality. So that was incredibly frustrating and I'm happy I get, I get to share it with you in this video. So sit back, relax. It's 60 seconds of beautiful Hawaiian content all shot in full auto mode on the Samsung S9 Plus. I hope you enjoyed that. I definitely enjoyed Hawaii quite a bit. It was so much fun being out there and shooting stuff and just rolling in auto mode and knowing that it all looked great. That was all shot on the S9 Plus. Really a shame that I couldn't launch it properly the way I wanted it to, but still, I'm glad I got to use that video for this video. I hope you um, had a good time watching this edit. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Samsung for sponsoring this video. It's been great working with you guys. Hopefully many more projects in the future. All the stuff I talked about is also on the blog with some extra cool stuff down there. All the products, all the things I, you know, it's all there. Just go check out the blog. It's worth it. I promise the link is down below. Um, before I go on a huge ramble, let me check my notes. No, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Samsung. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone. Thumbs up, subscribe, post notifications, turn them on. Leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. La 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 la. Oh, mate.